Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN, but more about them later. Hi everybody and welcome to the Deep Dive. This week I'm talking about dry suits. With more and more divers taking up local diving due to travel restraints, divers are expanding their horizons and diving in colder waters. But with colder waters, you need better exposure protection. Sure, you can go down the thicker wetsuit or semi-dry route, but with those, the thicker the wetsuit you go, the more buoyant you are, and the greater the change of buoyancy and insulation at depth that you have to keep in mind. Dry suits, they do have their benefits, and there really isn't anywhere that you can't dive in a dry suit. It's all about the insulation that you wear underneath it. Neoprene wetsuits, they have their temperature ranges where you can dive them before getting too cold. And whilst dry suits are conventionally thought of as exclusively for cold water, you can dive them in warmer waters as well. Not the thick, thick, heavy 8mm neoprene dry suits, but a membrane dry suit you can dive all year round if you really want to. It's just a tool for a job and you can use it however you like. So if you're looking at diving more at home or diving somewhere a little bit colder or diving for longer dive times and you want to invest in your own dry suit, let's dive a little deeper. So you have three choices of seals, your neck and your wrists, uh, latex, neoprene and silicone. Latex seals are the standard, they are a thin membrane that are glued to your dry suit. The important thing to remember about these is that they stretch when they're new. So they're often too tight when you first buy them, and then over time they start to relax to the right size. So a lot of divers, they stretch them before actually diving them, usually over a tank or something. If you stretch latex seals and they're still a bit too tight, then you'll notice rings on the seals themselves. These let you cut the edge of the seal so it's a little bit larger and it fits a bit more comfortably, but only ever cut them after you've stretched them. A lot of divers, they like latex seals as long as you dust them off with some non-scented talc, take your rings off and don't tug on them in one particular area too much, they should last a long time. They don't like to be stored for long periods though, especially when one side of that seal touches the other because the latex degrades over time and essentially melts into a kind of black sticky mess. So if you're storing your dry suit, just check on the seals from time to time so they get some fresh air, otherwise eventually they are just going to melt. Neoprene seals, they're a little bit tougher and they have a smooth sealing surface on one side. They're often more gentle than latex because they have a wider sealing surface, but if you have bony arms, water can find a way through sometimes. On neck seals, the sealing surface is sometimes on the outside because you're supposed to turn that neck seal in and fold it over so that is then touching your neck. Air inside of your dry suit will then help to push that seal against your neck and create an effective airtight seal. It feels counterintuitive, but it does work. The problem is, is that it can be hard to find the right fit and you do have to be quite careful when pulling them around and moving seals. If you pinch the neoprene cuff or a neck seal and tug on it a bit too much in one small area, it's really easy to rip that neoprene. You can glue it back together fairly quickly and easily, but do be very careful and try to pull with kind of the, the widest possible area to spread that force. The newest material is silicone, which is similar to latex. It's a thin membrane, but it can't be glued to a suit, so you need a rigid ring system. Glue just doesn't stick to silicone, so you need a ring system to actually fit them airtight to your dry suit. Thin and stretchy silicone is more gentle than latex in my experience, but some divers do find them a bit more delicate than latex. The best benefit of silicone though is that you can swap a broken seal in minutes, not days, and the ring systems, they allow for dry glove systems to be attached to them. Silicone seals tend to be fairly universal as far as fitting size. The industry has settled on one universal size and mechanism to attach seals, so it's pretty easy to find replacements as well. 
Cuffs and necks are often available in a range of different sizes for your wrists and your neck, uh, as well as different styles. Latex and silicone more than neoprene because they're a lot easier to cast than neoprene. So you'll find basic thicknesses and then often HD versions of a lot of cuff seals. So the membrane is just a little bit thicker on the HD versions. If you're worried about ripping them, they're a bit tougher, but they're also tougher. So make sure you get the right size or they can start to just be a bit too snug and cut off blood supply. Cone shapes and then bottlenecks. A cone seal is a basic cone shape, so there's more of a smaller area where it's actually creating a seal, whereas a bottleneck has more of a shoulder, so they're better for gloves and hoods so that the cuff seal and the gloves, they're not interacting as much with one another. Bottleneck, yeah, they, they quickly follow the contours of your wrists and your neck so they don't get in the way of your hood or whatever it is. Neck seals often have baffles, uh, either all the way around your neck or just on one side, the front or the back. The baffle allows you to physically move your neck a bit more without affecting the actual seal so that you can actually look up or look down without letting water in by just shifting that seal. The zipper can be a few different places and you have a few options when it comes to the zipper. There are two basic types of dry suit zipper. You get brass and plastic. Brass zippers are tough and heavy, but they're not particularly flexible. They will bend if you do need them to, but if you bend it too much, or if you, especially if you try and fold it to put it into a bag, you can break it quite easily. They need to be waxed, lubricated, because they are quite tough to do up, especially all by yourself. But we've been using them for decades, and brass zips, they work. Plastic zippers are a newer alternative that are much easier to do yourself, and they do have a lot of flexibility, especially compared to brass. But they're still pretty new, and they're still being perfected. They also have the slight problem that you have to dock the zipper to fully close it. So you pull it until it stops, but then you have to keep pulling it a little bit more to seat it properly. And that's where a lot of divers, when they're starting off with plastic zippers, fall flat you usually you you end up with a small hole that lets water in if you don't know you have to pull it a little bit further back entry zippers they'll have a long straight zip that runs across the back of your shoulders these are pretty popular and it's a pretty handy place to put the zipper to climb in and out of your suit the only downside is is that you usually need someone else to actually zip you up and then get you out of your dry suit after the dive which if you're busting for the loo can be a problem Front entry zippers, they run from your hip to the opposite shoulder, usually from your right hip to your left shoulder, but you can find the opposite. Front entry, you can typically get in and out from all by yourself, even if it's a brass zipper, so you don't need your buddy's help. But they do require the body of the dry suit to be telescopic, so the body of the dry suit is often ridiculously long to give you enough room to physically get your head in. But this gives you the added benefit of flexibility, so that the suit fits you no matter your height. And if you need to stretch a bit to reach for something, there's plenty of material to allow for that. You will have a crotch strap as well to hold the top half of the suit down folded over your midsection during the dive. So that's something else that you need to remember to do up before the dive. U-Zip and other alternatives are similar in that they are made so that you can get in and out of the dry suit all by yourself and they have a U-shaped zipper, go figure. Uh, usually from one shoulder around your neck to the other shoulder. Some are from one hip up and around the back of your neck and then then back down, something like that. These are okay. Um, if it's a brass zipper, they're not the easiest to do up all by yourself unless you're considerably strong and quite flexible and the zipper is lubed up as well, but it can be done. Many dry zips today also have a second outer zip over the top of them. This is not watertight in any way, it's just there for physical protection to protect the main zipper from your gear or anything else damaging the main zipper. You can sometimes find what are politely named convenience zips or relief zips, uh, mainly for the boys I'm afraid, but convenience zips are small dry zips in the front of the crotch so that you can go to the bathroom without getting out of the dry suit completely. 
There are two main avenues when it comes to dry suit material, neoprene and membrane. Neoprene suits are typically made from compressed neoprene, so they don't further compress at depth, and membrane suits are a thin, just material shell. It mainly comes down to what's more important for you. They both have their pros and cons, and they're typically opposite sides of the same coin. Membrane suits, they're pretty light, whereas neoprene suits are heavy. Membrane suits don't offer any thermal insulation themselves, but neoprene does. Membrane suits, they are much easier to puncture and damage, but they're also easier to fix. Neoprene, on the other hand, they're tougher, but of course they're heavy and they're more buoyant, so you need more lead to get down. Membrane suits require much more of an undersuit for the same equivalent warmth as a neoprene suit, but you do get better control of your insulation because it's all down to what's underneath it. It's, it's tough, but it's, it's a personal choice. There are also a clever range of membranes as well, membrane materials today, that have their own properties. One of the cleverest now is breathability. We now have dry membranes that are breathable so that when you're on the surface, you're much more comfortable because unlike other dry suits, especially neoprene, you're not in a completely sealed plastic bag inside your dry suit. Your skin can actually breathe so you don't feel like you have to get out of the suit as soon as possible. You can wear it quite comfortably out of the water. You can also find the, uh, the, the other end of the extreme, which is like a heavy rubber suit, but they're more designed for PSD diving and diving in just terrible conditions so that the chemicals or whatever you're diving in can't seep into the fabric of your suit. Uh, and then the suit after the dive, it can just be hosed down and cleaned completely. But these won't be much fun to dive in, uh, especially for recreational diving, they're more for commercial diving and they aren't really built with comfort in mind. Comfort is more of an afterthought. It's more for, it's rubber to stop nasty stuff from getting into your suit. You'll often have two valves on your suit and maybe a third if you want. One to inflate your dry suit. Uh, these are typically on the chest. If you have a front zipper, it might be offset slightly uh, just to get out of the way of the zipper. And whilst the exact design can differ between brands, they typically have a rotating nozzle so the inflator hose can just root in from any direction. And you'll have a button or some kind of switch to inflate very similar to your BCD. You push the button and it takes some gas from a cylinder. In most cases, it's even the same fitting as your BCD hose, but not always, so do double check. There are two main brands of valves. You get Apex and Cytec. As far as performance goes, I've never noticed a huge difference between the two, especially for just basic recreational diving, but the size of the hole fitted that's cut into your dry suit, the size of the hole is different. So if you're buying replacements, make sure that you choose the right one because they won't fit one another. The reason I say this is that if you choose to use a heated undersuit down the road with an external battery, you need to get that power into your suit somehow, so you'll need a new chest valve with like an EO connector on it. Dump valves are typically on your left shoulder and they're called auto dumps. You can find cuff dumps on some dry suits, but most suits nowadays, they just use auto shoulder dumps. Cuff dumps, they're fine, but they're just simple one-way valves and they can get a bit confused when you're up around the surface without the water pressure holding them closed, so you can end up with a wet wrist sometimes. Shoulder dumps, however, they have a mechanism. Usually the outside of the shoulder dump rotates and that's what controls how easy it is for that valve to open and vent gas. Screw it all the way in and it won't let any gas out. You're effectively in a completely sealed suit. So if you keep inflating, your suit will just keep inflating. But if you uh, sort of screw it all the way out, any gas inside of your suit that ventures anywhere near that shoulder valve will vent just anything, but you can let some water in. So some divers like it somewhere in the middle. It's automatic, so you don't really have to do too much to control your buoyancy as you start to ascend. It just kind of vents by itself and eventually you'll just find a nice setting that works for you. If you do need to manually, event, uh, manually vent, Normally at the beginning of the dive, or if you're having a runaway ascent, then you just punch it. Uh, pushing it in opens the valve and just vents as much as it can. So you do have that manual control. 
high profile and low profile, again, for me, I've never noticed a huge difference as far as performance. They both work. It's just high profile just kind of gets in the way of your BCD strap when you're trying to get ready. It's a bit more high profile. The third type of valve is a P-valve for longer dives where you may need to relieve yourself underwater. In a basic dry suit, if you try and relieve yourself, it's not going anywhere but just around your boots, unfortunately. So you can have a valve fitted to your thigh that connects to a hose on the inside of your suit that connects to an external catheter that connects to you. You find balanced and unbalanced valves here. Um, there'll be a screw valve on the outside of the suit. When you're ready to go, you unscrew that valve and you go and pray that it works. For balanced P valves, that is. Um, all you have to do after you've done your business, you just shut the valve and that's it. But for unbalanced P valves, you kind of need to start going before you open that valve so that the water pressure doesn't push cold water from outside inside. At the bottom of your dry suit, you'll have a pair of boots. These range from heavy duty rubber boots that are more like Wellington boots to just neoprene socks that require rock boots over the top. Again, it's a personal choice. Heavy boots are tough and they do last forever, but if they don't fit quite right and the legs of your suit are a little bit too long and you inflate your suit, the boot can pop off of your foot. They're also a bit clumpy and imprecise when you're trying to do some fine finning. Tech boots are somewhere in the middle. They're typically more flexible, especially around the ankles. They have neoprene sections around the ankle and Velcro straps are gonna allow for flexibility in your ankle and hold your boots in place. Neoprene socks are the other end of the spectrum to the really heavy welly boots. They have all the flexibility, but they do require extra boots over the top of them to use them properly and stop wearing through. Benefit of that is that you can properly lace up if you wear, uh, separate rock boots, you can lace them up to the perfect tightness. And if you do wear through those rock boots, if you've been using them a lot and you wear through the sole, it's a lot cheaper to change a pair of rock boots than fitted dry suit boots. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Pockets for me are very important on a dry suit. Pockets on your thighs give you valuable storage space for tools and gear so that they're not dangling off a D-ring and they're nice and streamlined as well. A few options here, openings, um, you'll find both zippered closure or just Velcro pockets. Zippered, they do often a certain amount of security. There's no way something's just gonna fall out of your pocket when it's zippered up properly, but they can be a bit tough to undo and do up one-handed, especially if they're a soft material. And also, they don't close themselves, so that's an extra task for you. Velcro closure pockets, they have a tab that you pull on to open them, and then when you're done, you let go and it just closes back down, and they tend to seal themselves, which is quite handy. Another benefit of Velcro closure is that they often have a small zippered pocket in the flap themselves for quick access extra storage. Inside of the pockets you'll often have separate sections, one large big open section for most of your bits and bobs, and a smaller flat section that's against your leg. These are for flat things like slates and wet notes. You'll often find bungees and D-rings on the inside to attach items to clip them off so that if you do open the pocket, even if something does fall out, it's not going to fall very far. And at the bottom of most pockets, you should find a section of mesh or drainage holes of some kind so that when you get out of the water, they're not full of water sloshing around on your thighs. On some pockets, you may find a way to keep your pockets neat when you're not using them as well. Most pockets are gusseted anyway, so they expand to give you some extra space, but some may have actual zippered sections all the way underneath them or Velcro tabs on the side to actually compress the pocket when they're empty. That way, if your pocket isn't completely full, it's just closer to your leg, a bit more streamlined and doesn't kind of flap around as much.
If your dry suit is fitted with silicone seals, then it will have a ring system around the neck and around the wrists. These can do more than just attach seals though. Cuff rings are the most practical and they are typically a flexible ring glued to the inside of your sleeve and then you have a second hard oval ring that is pushed into that. The oval shape makes it easier to fit your hand through without being too cumbersome and getting in the way on your wrist. But because there are only a few manufacturers of these, you can find quite a few choices of dry glove systems that match and replace that oval ring with another that allows you to fit dry gloves. So that way your hands can stay dry and warm compared to wetsuit gloves. Double check what your suit comes with, but nine times out of 10, there'll be SciTech Oval QCS rings. Um, if you have a very large size dry suit, you may have a different style, and some dry suit manufacturers, they're having their own systems nowadays, but most are gonna be SciTech or QB if they're metal. If you do go for a dry glove system, then your cuff seal usually stays in place so that you can still dive that suit without gloves. You still have that cuff seal, but this means that your gloves themselves are a separate airspace now. So as you descend, the airspace inside of that glove is going to squeeze. Because of that, a lot of dry glove systems, they come with a pair of small capillary tubes that you're supposed to tuck in underneath your cuff seal to allow air to migrate from your suit to your gloves. Some divers, they use the thumb loop of their undersuits, just something to break that cuff seal. All you have to do in the water to relieve a squeeze is just lift your hand up a little bit and you'll start to feel them inflate from the gas inside of your suit. The downside to this is that if you do rip a glove in the water, you need to keep your hand as far down as possible, otherwise the water has a really clear path into the rest of your dry suit. The gloves themselves, they range from very thin latex gloves like washing up gloves to tough vulcanized gloves that are made to be a little bit tougher for touching sharp, nasty things. Colored gloves are also very popular so that they stand out a bit better in the water so that you can communicate much more effectively instead of using black gloves against a black dry suit, which your buddy's never gonna see, you have white or blue or yellow orange. You also need inner gloves to keep your hands warm, much like an undersuit for your dry suit, you now need an undersuit for your hands, but you don't need very much as far as thickness to actually keep your hands warm, which means that you still have plenty of dexterity. Natural fibers like merino are very good. I think I've even worn llama wool before, which was very warm, but you want something with a fairly short cuff so it doesn't get in the way of the ring mechanism and something that works well even when it's wet, just in case the seal fails. You don't want a numb hand. Most dry suits from new, they come with an inflator hose, a basic hood and a bag. Not all, but most. You often won't get any choice in the size of hood that comes with your dry suit, so you get what you're given, I'm afraid. But if you are ordering a suit that's being made from scratch, you sometimes do get a choice in the size of hood. Dry suit hoods are often bibless, so there's less material around your neck to get in the way of your neck seal because you won't be tucking it in like a wetsuit underneath your neck seal, you're just gonna get wet. What some dry suits do have though is a warm neck, which is basically just a section of neoprene all the way around your neck over your neck seal that protects that latex or silicone neck seal and adds a little bit of warmth as well. But you can tuck the hood underneath that to slow water ingress. Inside of your dry suit, you often have suspenders or braces depending on where you live. They're called different things and if you tell some people around the world that you got suspenders in your dry suit, you get a funny look. Um, but these are good because one, they hold the bottom of your suit up when you're not wearing the top half, sort of walking around the dive site or on the deck of the boat. Two, if you have heavy things in your pockets, they actually hold them up and stop the waste from slipping down. And some even have internal storage pockets inside of your dry suit. So when you got the top half off, out of the water, you can keep some stuff on you. Just be sure to check the pockets before you go for the next dive and make sure whatever's inside of that pocket is okay with one, the water pressure, and two, potentially getting wet because dry suits aren't always 100% dry inside. And that's about 
it for dry suits. They, they have plenty of individual features. Each suit is gonna have its own sort of trump card feature. Um, some they'll have a built-in undersuit. Some will have double layer shells so that you have incredible flexibility without flappy material everywhere. And if you do rip or cut the outer shell, you're still dry inside because you've got that second internal one. So do look through the whole description of a dry suit to make your mind up because some do have have some hidden secrets that are definitely worth investing in. If you're stuck between two specific dry suits and you want our opinion, then let us know down in the comments below and we'll do our best to help you out. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving. Being safe and secure online is more important than ever, with more and more companies wanting to get a hold of your information and selling it onto the highest bidder. This is where ExpressVPN comes to the rescue. They have over 3,000 servers in 160 different locations spanning over 94 countries, and this list is growing every single day to help protect your online identity. Their VPN works on Macs, Windows, iOS, Android, and even round as well. ExpressVPN even works with Netflix to help stream your media content. So say you're a massive Office fan and you live in the United States, you can't actually access that show on Netflix. Well, using ExpressVPN, you can connect to the Netflix in the UK, which has the Office, as of recording, so that you can binge watch it for the millionth time. To our viewers, you can get three extra months free when you sign up for a 12-month package by clicking the link pinned in the comments. So if you want to stay safe on the internet and watch your favorite streaming shows, then you should consider ExpressVPN. Okay, back to the video.